Hi, I'm Brian Rose. And Michael McPherson. Welcome to the Lion's Den. Series finale, mate. I'm emotional about this. I know, I'm a bit sad. Well, we're coming back in about six, seven weeks, shouldn't we? So we shouldn't be too sad. you just got to go and smash up Martin now. I've we'll got a big, back. big fight to think about, haven't I? I know, I know. And I've, I've got lots on as well, like really busy, so I could do it. I haven't really. I'm just going to be waiting, pining for Brian. Going to the weeks. Indian or... Yeah, yeah, just having a few pints yeah. and, yeah, playing a bit of <laughs> golf and uh, just doing the odd deal, mate. Yeah, I do, do, I'm busy sometimes. Yeah, you do all right for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a great one coming up today. There's no one, nothing better, really, than a series finale to have two Olympians on. Um... You know, big Fraser, bronze medalist, team captain, Galau, gold medalist. Absolutely smashed it. Proper captivated the nation with their performances. And they're coming on the Lions Den podcast. Yeah, it's a, it's like a special edition. The first amateurs we've had on, but the elite amateurs, you're not getting any better than them too. You know, we've got a gold medalist, a bronze medalist that are turning over, that are probably going to turn over with the best promoters in the world. So yeah. um, it's, it's a great finish. What you'd give right now to be in their shoes, literally coming in there fresh, Every promoter in the world is going to be after them, all the top oh, guys. They certainly won't be doing what I was doing and fighting in sports centres every few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, you know, that dedication and, and sticking out at the amateur circuit and especially with that delay they had with, with COVID and... That's kind of bought them this chance, isn't it? So, you know, you've got to commend them, really. Unbelievable, really, because they could have quite easily turned pro, you know. Um, Definitely. Fraser sp spoke about um, the, the money he was offered and things like that. So, there's... Um, he could quite easily have turned pro. Mm, definitely. Well, we'll have a chat with them later on. We'll answer them who they're looking at. I'll try and pitch myself, see if they want to sign up with me. But I've not really got much hope, mate, if I'm being honest. Not when you've got the Eddie Hearns out there and the Frank Warren and stuff. Another year or so, mate, they'll be they'll be Yeah, definitely, with us. definitely. But with the uh, with the series coming to an end, I think we should. it's only fair that we look back on some of our best moments. I mean, I was thinking about it this morning. There's been, been so many, really, um, the guests we've had on. Even like the things that I find funny is the first five or six episodes, we just... We're doing it ourselves. Like our sound was terrible. You could barely hear us. We were just like naive enough to think you could come in here and just like set up a laptop and all of a sudden you had and a podcast. And then we got, we got the boys in. We've got these us. guys that yeah. shall not, shall not be thank named. Them no, they can be named. It's Rob and Al. They've got a podcast as well called the Middle Isle Podcast. It's very funny. Yeah. It's very funny. Really good. So um, make sure you subscribe to their channels and, and, and listen, listen to theirs too. Yeah, they're good. They're good. But if they're better than us, come back to us anyway. Yeah. Or listen to both. Or unsubscribe if they are better than us. Yeah. And don't tell us. <laughs> no, they're good guys. They've really smashed it for us. And everyone behind the scenes as well, Stephen, Lawrence. Yeah, they've done, they've done good jobs. Yeah. So we've got a good little team now, haven't we? Yeah, we have. So, mate, what's some of your best moments? <sighs> There's lo lots to talk about in the Dave Allen one. Um, I, he was going to the, the Brass House for free coffees. That's something that will stick in my <laughs> mind forever. Basically, uh, my, my best moments, highlight reel, would just be the whole Dave Allen episode. So I think, in, in fairness, we need to sort of like mention yeah. a few others because everyone has been superb, to be fair. Yeah, the Ricky Allen one was, was really good as well because um, yeah. he, he's a likeable character. Everyone, I, I, I can't even subs uh, like describe I my, Ant my favourite Anthony moment. Fowler was good. I think the, the fact that the circumstances in which Anthony Fowler come on when he'd been in Portugal, come back, heavily pregnant partner nearly knocked someone out of the airport because they wouldn't let him do <laughs> yeah. his COVID test and he still wouldn't let you down. Yeah. That, was, that was respect he had for you and he come on and he was really good. And even the fact that I let him come on my podcast, the fact yeah. that he'd, he'd beat me in a 12-round fight, you know. <laughs> <laughs> really, let's have it right, I shouldn't have let him on. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, he did say to you, if you don't, then I'll fight you again. Yeah, so, and beat yeah. you again. <laughs> <laughs> That's been brilliant. Tony Bell, you were superb. He, we could have sat until we did sit and talked to him for about for about two hours and Peter Reid come on and joined yeah. and the passion they had about Everton and I remember like Reedy sitting there going giving it all that and I thought like it was it was great mate and there's there's loads more um you know everyone Rampage superb Sasha Jonas superb I don't want to leave it Anthony Crawler yeah different class you know Lyndon Sonny the double yeah. act they had a really good story didn't they uh, Lyndon had a great background to to you know what he's been through to to turn pro and you know at one point he didn't even want it you know mm. he turned pro because he there was a lot of money in it. So yeah. um, they've all got amazing stories. They've all got funny stories, more, some yeah. more than others. <laughs> you nearly lost your place to Lyndon, you know, you, you nearly come in. I know, he was and... after my job, were not he? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes in the break, you know. Um, no, super, superb stuff. Remember, all these episodes are live now. Um, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, on our Instagram. You know, go back and have a listen to them. As I say, the first few, the sound quality is not the best, but you can hear the guests. You can always hear them well, which is most important. <laughs> yeah well thanks for all the support guys um 
listen, we really appreciate it. But I want to ask, who do you want me to get on next? Who who, who do you want me to get? Because listen, I've done a good job already. That's all right. I've done job. a good job. And uh, you tell me who you want on next. Yeah, that's it. Shout in, write in, tell us who you don't write in. This is not the 1980s. I don't know what happened there. Tweet us, Instagram us, YouTube us, do fax us. That's still a thing, isn't it? Fax machines. Just let us know what you want on and Brian will make it happen. He's done done so well so far. There's nothing I'm not capable of. You name the box and I'll try and get him. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And you know what, mate? Without getting all soppy about it, you asked me in, I think, in March to to do this with you and, and co-host this podcast. And I want to say thank you for that because it's been amazing to do it and it's been such a joy and it's been good fun sitting next to you every week and you've opened up the doors of all these people and it's like been a pleasure, pal. Yes. I have, I have, but you have carried me through these podcasts at times. You know, you're a great co-host, and um, you presentation and everything you've done is um, has helped me. So, and it's given me more confidence during these podcasts, and hopefully standing up in front of a crowd and telling my story, which is what date. <laughs> October, the, look at that, he's got so good at plugging his own show. In the, <laughs> well, I'm not very good at plugging, I just can't remember the date. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm tearing up here, I'm really moved, and he's trying to get a plug in. So, I tell you, I've taught you well. I'm now like, you know, oh, you're Obi-Wan. Mate, I'm you're trying to, to plug it, Vader, I can't right? remember you, the date. Tell, tell them the date, we need to know the o date and October, where it is. October the, I'm going to say the 9th, could be the 8th. Yeah. Yeah, Brian, I'm sure Brian will correct me later on. At, at the Pavilion? No, at the park oh, house. Oh. That's pavi but Pavilion downstairs, isn't it? The White Room. Oh, the Pavilion Bar in the Park yes. House Hotel. Brian's going to be doing a live show. I'm going to be there as well. I'm going to be hosting. I forgot that as well. Yeah. We're really prepared, don't we? Yeah. We're really prepared. <laughs> I'll, I'll remember it on the night. Come along and see us. Come along and see Brian, not me. We've got some special guests coming there. Dave Allen's going to be turning up on our table. Ricky Hatton, potentially. Hopefully a few others, yeah. Yeah. We've, um, we've offered to pay Ricky's bar bill if he turns up, and then Brian kindly reminded me it's better off to just pay him. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be cheaper. Yeah, but that... that, that this podcast has helped me, you know, even even agree to doing something like that. So um, I appreciate you for that. No, cheers, man. I've not carried you at all. My back's <laughs> it's terrible. No, mate, it's been great. Superb stuff. So we should, let's cut the soppy stuff now. Let's get the Olympians on, the real superstars. Let's get Fraser and Galau on. Let's go. Lads, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. Oh, good, oh, good. Good to see oh, you. I bet you've got a driver now, aren't you? Gold medalist, you've got a driver. <laughs> nah. Don't, don't don't say that. I'm still I'm still a uh, no, 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 no. Tell the truth. Like, we're going on we're going on a question of sport tomorrow. I'm driving there, and he's got yeah. a fucking driver. <laughs> Fraser, before we start, mate, you've got a bit of shit on your shirt there. Have that one, Brian. There you go, cheeky fucker. <laughs> That's you know it. what? I was in two. I was in two minds about wearing it as well because I knew someone was going to come with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm an Arsenal fan, so I can't really speak. Fraser, I won't even go into that one now. You can't. You can't say shit. <laughs> it's, it's been a bad. It's been a bad time, mate. Lads, I got to answer your first question. How long does it take before you stop carrying the medal everywhere with you? Are you still? Is it still in your hand at all times? No. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Galar? Nah, me. My mind's stuck in, uh, in its box. Crazy's a bit different to me. Crazy sleeps with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, boys, what's it been like since coming back from, from the Olympics? Has, it, has your life changed? How has it impacted on your life? Well, it's, it's definitely changed for me because like, I was already like, I knew that getting an Olympic medal would be like good and everything, but I didn't realise that fucking Dorothy from down the street wouldn't know who I am or Roy, Roy on the corner or, you know, just like people that never really used to take notice. Like everyone stops you and says, oh, well done. And I'm talking to random, complete random people. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been good. It's been, it's been busy and it's been really different though compared to when, when you're an amateur, no one gives a shit really, you know, like, even though we're doing amazing things and representing the country, no one really knows about it, but the Olympics is just different level. Well, you deserve them pats on the back, mate. You've done amazing. And you, and you, Galal. Oh, thanks. Um, for me, I, I'd say the same with Fraser, really. I'd just say, um, yeah, you're more of, a, more of a deal. Before, like, people wouldn't really notice me. Um, they'd probably notice Fraser a bit more because he's big and he's got a big fat head. Um, <laughs> but, um, but with me, they wouldn't notice me as much. Maybe... 
I was getting a bit more attention because of my brother's been pro, but yeah, now it's just like everywhere I go, people are like, congratulations. Um, and I know the journalists want to speak to me now, so yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, well, yeah. You're, 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 you should just be very grateful to me and thankful to me because I, yeah, only, I, 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 I only got a bronze. Because if I got the gold as if I got the gold as well, no one would still would give a fuck about you. So I only got the bronze, and I only got the listen, bronze to, to give you a bit yeah. more shine. Listen, listen, listen. You're the heavyweight, yeah. But listen, you're on my undercards now, mate. You know what I mean? You're on my undercard now. I'm the yeah, top we'll of the see. show now, mate. We'll, we'll see, mate. We'll see. Uh, so you'd have to do like double headlining bills, lads, just so you don't have any like domestics and stuff. That would be like in your new contract with your new promoter. Both have to be joint headlines. No, I've, I've, I've already got my contract. I refuse to box now, on, a, phrase on a show that. where I box before, if I box before Galo. <laughs> <laughs> it won't happen. It won't happen. <laughs> that, lads, I've got to go back a little bit with the games being delayed because of COVID and everything like that. And uh, I know with you, Fraser, like, you know, 2012, Joshua went in 2016, Big Joe went. Um, you know, you've, you, you're prepared for this for years. You get pushed back for a year. I've got to say, I admire the persistence and the dedication so much to kind of stick it out and, you know, wait for the games and then perform so well. What was it like? Was there, was there ever any moments where you doubted it and thought, you know, I'm better off just to go pro here? You know, I'm fed up waiting around. Did you manage to keep yourself focused? What, what were you doing to keep yourself focused? Um, for me, loads of times, yeah. Um, the, the, when the first lockdown hit, I was on the phone straight away, I was, because... I've had people sniffing around me for years, you know, for the pros. Mm. So I, I just got on the phone and just picked up a few of them conversations. Uh, but it was just like, I wasn't really thinking with my heart. It was just like my head, you know, I was, I was, I was annoyed that it had been delayed and stuff. So I was thinking, you know, I'm just going to rush into it, which is total like, it's not my personality. So after speaking to like good people, they convinced me to wait. And I'm so glad I did because like I say, like Brian's been a pro. Brian, Brian knows the score and, I've not been a pro, but I've been around the shows for a lot of years and, you know, people might think it's glitz and glam and this and that, but I know for a fact it really ain't. So the, this Olympic medal has enabled me, it's still not going to be completely glitz and glam, but it's going to be a lot easier, I think, you know, just, just to get by than it would have been if I'd have gone before that Olympic medal. I had a bit of a profile, but this is it's just to accelerate me to a different level. So it's still going to be a completely hard game, very, very hard game. But I think it's going to make my path to where I want to go a little bit more bearable. Yeah, I mean, my first 10 fights were in sports centres. You, you give yourself a platform by winning that medal and uh, you'll certainly get, you know, a, a quicker start than I did. So, so well done for yeah, that. That, that, that. That's the reason I did it. That's the yeah. reason. So what's, I'll tell you what's something I, I really were interested in actually, being a, being a manager myself and knowing how in demand that you two will be now. Literally, you know, you'll have your Eddie Hearn, your Frank Warren, your Bob Arams, all the big names, you know, wanting to get hold of you two. What are you looking, when, when these guys are pitching to you now, which they will be, what are you two looking for from them? What, what is going to be the sell for you from the promoter? You know, we want you, Fraser, we want you Galau, we'll do anything to get, you know, sign you up. What, what are you boys looking for? Money, I'm, jo I'm joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. Nah, not the money. Um, you know, just I just want to be a pro already, man. I want to fight. Um, I don't know about Fraser, but now Fraser's like me actually. Fraser wants to fight. Um, obviously it's got to make sense. Um, we we'll speak to people, we'll get the best advice. Um, but yeah, the main thing what I want to do is fight and fight on the best platform. Obviously, money is great. Obviously, we want to get you know the, the right amount of money and stuff. But yeah, I can think fighting on the best platform really for me. Yeah. Yeah, and for me, it's just like when I like some of these conversations I've had so far. Um, a thing that's very important for me is um, t TV dates. That that's something that I, need. I, I want someone with good TV. I want, I want I want someone with I want people who are men of their words, which is very difficult to to come across. I've I've only been looking into the program for ten days, and I've found it's like fucking someone keeping their words like rocking or shit already. So. Um, <laughs> it's, it's one of them but yeah TV TV dates um, a good stable and, and someone who, who can someone who's got a bit of pull you know to guide me in the right direction a little bit of pull with the governing bodies and this and that because um, yeah, I'm not saying I want to rush but you know I, I, I d definitely want to go faster than your average um, person turning pro uh, because I feel like I'm experienced and when I look out there now especially British level you know I, I feel confident I can compete with um at that level already so you know I need to 
I've had a couple of, couple of weeks off now. I'm going to I'm going to try not to you know not to go up about three jean sizes and uh, <laughs> and and just stay in the gym, stay active, and that way there, you know, I want to get with a promoter that can just get get me going at least once this year, and then probably five or six times next year. Fair, it's fair. It sounds like you both got a good idea of it. And what would be your what would be your dream debut fight? If if the promoter coming now and he said I can get you anyone, I'll get you anyone, boys. Who who do you want to fight? Jump straight in against. Um, not Nigel, the security guard from Weatherspoons. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so, 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 so I can just flatten him and, and look good because no one really knows what I'm about. Do they? People look at look at everyone's opponents. Look at look at Tyson Fury's first ten yeah. opponents. Look at Joshua's first ten opponents. No, no one really knows. Yeah. Everyone just sees the knockouts, don't they? So I, take, yeah, I, take, I, I can I, promise you. I can promise you're going to end up with someone like Nigel from Weatherspoons. I tell you what, though, Fraser, we're in, we're in Blackport at the moment. You go down to the Weatherspoon. Some of those security guards are rough as fuck, mate. I tell you. Yeah, you mate, I was nearly fighting with a transvestite the other night. I'm not even joking, <laughs> mate. Serious. And she Next she, door. Hey. she was seven and zero oh as well. She, she she'd have probably done me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you, Galar? Yeah, for me, same. I just want someone easy. I can knock out in a few rounds. I'm sick of fighting these tough class amateurs. And it'd be nip and tuck three rounds. I want someone I could knock out in a round two. <laughs> I've got to ask, boys, the experience of the Olympics and, and, and winning the medals. You know, I know it was different this time around because, because of the, the COVID stuff, but was it, was it everything you dreamed of? And, you know, did you, did, it, did you kind of exceed your expectations? And, you know, will it be something you remember for a long time? Yeah, it was it was it was unbelievable, and to do it with to do it with you know your fr- you, one of your like your best friend, like me and Gilo, like everyone knows we're like we're close, you know, we were like brothers, and to do it with him uh, and Ben Whitaker as well, he was like he was like it was like a little free one was there because you know uh, unfortunately Chev and Peter they were in our room and they went out to the tournament on my own, so we sort of had like a little pact going on in the room, and you know if you didn't win medals you didn't come into that room, so it was just a fantastic experience and. It would have been a lot better without the coronavirus, but to do it, to do it over there and to do it with your friends, and I seen how proud it made the coaches and everyone back home. It, it was, you know, over, like I've said this already. Other than my kids being born, it was the best. They had the best moment. It was the best moments of my life. But the collectively, the best four weeks of my life, one hundred percent. It was unbelievable. For me, it's something that will be get talked about in twenty, thirty years because you've done it in a pandemic. So. It's never going to happen again, you know, not in probably our lifetime. So it's amazing that you've been able to spar because I know amateur boxing at one point wasn't even allowed. So um, mm-hmm. you've done great by getting the sparring that you needed and, and still fighting and boxing for medals and winning medals. It's amazing. I've got, I've got to say, lads, the camaraderie in the team looks absolutely superb. The boxing was superb. I want to ask you quickly, Fraser, just about the, you know, the fight of Aliyev and the kind of whole protest and stuff like that. And I know you've probably been asked this a million times, but you, you didn't look, when it was all going on, you didn't really look like you were appealing for a disqualification or didn't look like you were kind of like expecting that to happen. You, just, you looked really sort of calm throughout the whole thing. What, what was actually going through your head? I didn't know what the fuck was going on, if I'm honest. That's what, that's what it looked like, what to be was honest. Going on. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I thought the referee was telling me, you know, I thought he took a point off, which I thought he deserved to have a point off, definitely. Um, and he was putting his head in, but it's a fight, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, mm. I'm, I'm not one of them people that's going to sit here and say, oh, I'm not going to scream, yeah, get him out of the ring. I, I'm, I'm a fighter, he's a fighter. He was, try, he was trying to get a little bit of an unfair advantage. I can understand that. I beat him up about three times, do you know what I mean? Mm. So I get it. But um, the referee stopped it, and, and it is what it is, but... Um, yeah, I, w- I thought I was going to carry on. Every time I fought him, I fought him, well, I fought him, I fought him four times and I've been cut six times, different, six different cuts as I fought him. Not one of them has been from a punch. So um, it yeah. just, you know, it says a lot about him. And, and, and do you know what? Like, I don't want to just, how can I put it? He's just, a, he's just a dickhead. He's just one of them people. Yeah. He's just, you know, on, on the boxing circuit, you go around and you see all these countries and no, you're not super friendly with them, but you get on with them. This guy, you know, he's a big super heavyweight. He tries to intimidate people, staff members. He's a dickhead. I, I, I would have loved, you know what? I, my coach has actually taught me down because when yeah. I, I would have loved to have just blindsided him and just knocked him spark out. Because that's how much of a dickhead <laughs> he is, honestly. Yeah, I, mate, I, you could see that. You could see that in the aftermath of it as well. And I, thought, I think you conducted yourself superb because. I mean, you tried to shake his hand. You tried to do everything sportsman's like, and he just, he just wasn't having it. And I, I see your coach saying to you, just leave it, just leave it. And uh, 
Yeah, I mean, he just he made himself look very bitter sitting there for 20 minutes. At one stage, you should have took him out a pint and just said, here, mate, don't worry about it. It's, it's fine. But um, he yeah, won't it, was it? So, so some, some people, like, obviously, the adrenaline's going there, something like that. But some, sometimes, like, obviously, I've got a good head on my shoulder, you know, from like, my dad and that. So sometimes you have to just take a deep breath and what's done was done. I, I, I'd got my Olympic bronze medal. That's not the way I wanted to get it, by the way. But it was out of my hands, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in that final, mate, it was one of the best performances I've, I've ever seen. Literally just every part of your boxing skills was just was just superb. Was there ever a moment in that fight where yeah. you thought, I'm going to be a gold medalist here, and it hit you, and you had to just kind of keep yourself calm, or was you in the moment all the time? Nah, you know what? When I put him down in the first round, I thought, oh, my God, I can put him down in the Olympic final. I thought, yeah, that's, that should win this now. Um, but then he come back strong in the second round, and I thought, oh, I've got, to, I've got to make sure I win this round. Um, but once I won that round, I went back to the corner and I said, you won that 4-1. And I knew I'd won it then. So that's why in the last round I thought, you know what, I'm going to just smooth round a little bit. So I thought I'll just show my boxing skills instead of going for a war like I normally do. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'd say after the second round, I thought, yeah, I've probably won this now. So um, so yeah. So do you... Yeah. Do you still know the score when you go back to the corners? Because I know it used to come up on the screen when I was boxing and you, we used to go back to the corner and we used to know. Do you still know that now? Yeah. So, like, after the round, when the round was done, I was in, yeah, I was in the corner and Lee Pullen was like, uh, yeah, you won that round or you've lost that round or whatever. He taught after the first round, I was 4 0. Um, after the second round, I was 4 1 off. So I knew then he was no chance of him yeah. come back in his fight unless he knocked me out. Um, your bike. <laughs> which is uh, yeah so I thought you know what I thought I'm going to get on my bike which I never ever do yeah. um, and, and I quite enjoyed it too but, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was uh, listen it, with, with me I've got a heart and I fight to the death but I thought you know what I've won it already I'm just going to move around and just enjoy this last round and yeah I was over the moon <laughs> Superb, superb. And we're good, lads. And Fraser's trying to get off to watch Love Island. He's, he's made that clear. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna finish terrible, with uh, terrible. We're gonna finish with a quick six rounder as we always do. And we're both gonna answer you some random questions. They might not even be boxing yeah. related. We don't even prepare them to be honest with you. We just throw them out there. So I'm gonna go first, and I'm gonna answer Big Fraser. Who is his ultimate Man United player? Who's the best player he's seen in a Man United shirt? Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Fair shout. Fair shot. I'm going to keep it football related. So, Galal, who yeah. do you support, Villa or Birmingham? I'm not even going to answer that question. Mate, I'm a Birmingham City fan, so you need to answer this correctly. You, 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 you know that I'm a, I'm a Blues fan. Oh, I, I know your brother was, but I didn't know, I didn't know if you was like a Villa fan. <laughs> oh, that's good, mate. I like you even more now. Mate. Perfect, perfect. Be, that's good to know. I didn't want him. I didn't want him, I didn't want him stepping up the weights to sort you out. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> fucking fill me in now. <laughs> Fred, who, who would you rather? Too big, uh, Brian. Too big, mate. <laughs> he's looking quite sharp at the moment as well. Too fair, <laughs> so. Fred, who would you rather go for a for a beer with or a night out with? Joe Joyce or Anthony Joshua? Hey, it has to be Joshua. It's like trying to get blood out of fucking stone. Trying to get a conversation out of Big Joe, isn't it? Anthony <laughs> Joshua. He boxes like that as well, doesn't he? Yeah. Probably... <laughs> yeah. No, uh, yeah, it has to, has to be big Josh. Yeah. Um, Galal, who's the toughest person you've sparred with? I'm four, in fact. You know, who, who's the best kid you've been in with? The best kid I've probably ever been in with is probably a Colombian I fought in 2017. He was Olympic silver medalist. Yeah. He was just a little, he was just a little beast, man. Um, probably him. Yeah, did, definitely probably him. Did you find, was was it because he was so good or did he just clash with your styles or or was he just because uh, he was... I, I was a little beast. I thought, yeah, I'm going to steamroll this kid. I'm going to steamroll for him. Him down, could you kid? I, I, could and and he did it to down. me. <laughs> he did it to me and I thought, oh my God, what a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, nah, but he taught me a lesson. He taught me a lesson and uh, it was a lesson that, uh, that worked out for me then. Yeah. Right, Fred, I'm going to finish by saying I imagine that everyone has come forward and said congratulations to you. I know, like, celebrities all over the place, important people, the man in the street. What's been the one that's really stood out to you, the one where you've had to pinch yourself and go, wow, I can't believe so-and-so is actually knows who I am and wished as well? Apart from me and Brian. Who was it? <laughs> yeah, you too. Um, there's been a few. 
Probably Liam Gallagher. Oh, class. Yeah. He's a yeah, City fan was, as well. I know, that was, that, that, that was a tweet. He was just like, uh, what did he say? Something like, um, you know, just proper something, proper Liam Gallagher. It was like, big phrase, oh, there's nails or something mad like that. I was just like, fucking hell. <laughs> That's mint. When you say it, I just hear his accent as well. That's the thing about Liam yeah. Gallagher. He's, just, he's so prolific. He's just like, yeah, anything you say, you hear the voice. I'm cheating a bit here, yeah, but I want the same question for Galal. No, I, think that's, like, I think that's a good question. I'd like to know. But, you know what? Mine's the same. He tweeted me as well. Oh, he, he, he? He tweet, yeah, he tweeted me something like, oh, yo, oh, yo, yeah, boy, something like that. So I was like, sweet, mate. Fraser doesn't, no, but you Fraser are... doesn't feel as important now, does he? <laughs> No, 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 yeah, he didn't give a shit about me after that. He you know what? Like, <laughs> when I won the British title, he tweeted me, you know. Yeah, he must like boxing, yeah. innit? <laughs> to be honest, yeah, he's, Manx, like he's never tweeted me. I've, uh, I've tweeted him a few times. He's blanked me every time, so uh, a bit a bit left out. <laughs> well, but, no. I've, got, I've, I've, I've got a question for Brian. Go on. Are, are you going to fucking avoid that fucking big left hand off Sergio Martinez? Because... Um, uh, oh no. <laughs> I'll have to, won't I? But mate, he's 46, so listen, it's like a golden ticket for me because he's ranked third in the world in the WBA rankings. I'm 36. Wow. I ne- I mate, because he, he fought in 2020, so he's still an active fighter, and because of his name, he's so high up. But mate, I never thought at 36 I'd be fighting someone older than me, and he's fucking 10 years older than me, so I'm going to punch his head in. <laughs> No, yeah, good. No, we're behind you. We're behind yeah, you. No, no, nice but I do nah, need yeah, to avoid yeah, that left hand. Yeah, I'll be behind you. Yeah. Now, yeah, oh, Brian, Brian, he used to be one of my favourite fighters, Martinez. But yeah. I'm rooting for you, mate. I'm yeah. rooting for you. Mine too, mate. And listen, he's not the fighter he once was. He's still a tough ask for me to go nah. over there and win. But, mate. No, he, mate, he's just, he's, just, he's just a fucking, just a stupid sap. Or they're all wankers. So just get it, just get it done, mate. Do the job. Do a job on it. Cheers. Listen, Cheers, praise, mate. I stick to this. And South Pole should be put, put down at birth. I'm telling you, I fucking hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, come on. Come on, mate. Come on, Brian, mate. Come on, oh, come mate. On. Listen, I think you're great, but, mate, I can't stand South Pole. Oh, mate, I struggle with him bad. Yeah. <laughs> Lads, thanks so much for coming on. I know how in demand you are, and I appreciate that so, so much. Top, top stuff. Uh, anytime, wish, anytime. Yeah, love, 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 love all the time, guys. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. And listen, well done on the medals. Um, getting the goal, getting yes, the thank point. You. Hey, you've done great. Honestly, brilliant. And, and good luck turning pro. Nah, thank you. Cheers, awesome, boys. Right. See, see you later. Thanks a lot, right. See you in a bit. Sound. Bye, See you. Bye, Bye, Bye. Bye. Mate, now we say every time the guests go off, but how good was that? Oh, it was brilliant. Uh, well, great way to finish. Uh, two. Elite amateurs, just about to turn pro. What a way to finish the episode. Big Fraser walking around with his medal as well. By the way, we should say that he didn't actually have the medal on him when we when he first came on. We was off air and I said, come, mate, get the medal. I want to see it. So he doesn't carry around with him everywhere. He's on his stairs or something. Yeah, he was just on his stairs. That was ridiculous. <laughs> just like an Olympic bronze medal just sitting on your stairs. Great stuff. Great stuff. No, it was, mate, the camaraderie that they had in that, in that old games was brilliant. And you can see they carried it on to when they come on with us, like... Fraser's like a big brother, isn't he? He's allowed to giving him a hard time. I, I like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to give him the idea, but they could start a podcast together, couldn't they? Don't, don't tell him that. You <laughs> I, noticed, I noticed that Sonny, Sonny and Lyndon are doing I know, it. I know. I, I, I want some kind of cut out of that. If you're listening, Sonny and Lyndon, we're coming down to see you, yeah? We're coming. We're not, oh, we're not really. You, you can see him first, and I'll, just, yeah, I'll <laughs> be in the back. No, good luck with that, lads. You smash it on your own podcast. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. No, the boys were superb. As we said before, series finale, little break now, a couple of months off. And we'll come back. We'll come back even stronger, bigger guests. We couldn't. I don't think we could actually get bigger guests. It's going to be difficult, but we will come back with as good a guest as, yeah. as or, or just the same guests all over again. Because we'll get, it, we'll, it was that good. Yeah, it would, mate. It would be superb. We could have like a whole. We could just have. Let's have like one episode. Where we just have everyone on. Yeah, let's try and get a few prospects on as well. You know, the, yeah. the prospect boxes. It's it's not fair. Give give them a bit of a platform. Now we're building a following. Yeah. Let's give them a bit of a platform. I like that. He's a man of the people and he's a good guy. That's why, that's why we love him. That's why we love him. <laughs> Mate, go and smash Sergio Martinez. Get that done. Make us all proud. I'm looking forward to being out in Madrid with you on that, on that weekend. It'll be, it'll be great. Um, and mate, let's get back and do this again because it's been an absolute pleasure Next this time season. I'm sat in this seat, I'll be the first Brit to go over and beat Sergio Martinez. I'm going to make history. Mate, we're all behind you for that. You're going to do it. I know you will. Thanks, pal. Pleasure, pal. Guys, Thanks a lot, and we'll see you on season two. Thanks, thanks, and welcome to the Lion's Den.
What the fuck did I say? Welcome to Lions Den. <laughs> Can we start that again? <laughs> that was fucking unbelievable. That was so good. And then I just, why? Thanks for joining us on the Lions Den. What an helmet. I looked at these two, they're like, what the fuck did he just say?